Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. In today's video we'll have a look at base training or how to fly traffic patterns in the Boeing 737. So let's dive right into it. We are standing at Paderborn Airport, Echo Delta Lima Papa, which has a great freeware provided by Aerosoft, which I can really recommend you to check out. And for our circuit, we are going to do a left-hand circuit if we're sitting on the captain's seat and a right-hand circuit if we're sitting on the first officer's seat. The circuit itself is flown at 2,000 feet above the aerodrome elevation, so Paderborn is located at 700 feet, so we're looking at a pattern altitude of 2,700 feet. It is a very good practice to insert the departure runway, so we can quickly do this over here. So we'll go from Paderborn to Paderborn, and we are going to depart on runway 24. Now, you don't need to execute any route here, since this is purely a visual maneuver. However, it is good practice to at least insert the basic performance data so that your FMC roughly knows what you are about to do, even though you're not actively going to use it. However, you do want to have the extended centerline available on your navigation display because this can provide really a great aid. Final word about configuration here. For the payload, we are going for uh, zero passengers. And for the fuel loading, normally when airlines do circuit training, they are going to do it for several pilots at once. So you're looking at least at five or six trainee pilots in the aircraft who are going to fly five or six circuits each. So, on the first flight of the day, you're probably going to have quite a full fuel loading, like 16 tons. On the last, maybe 4 tons or something, or whatever it needs to get back to your airline's training base, if you did the circuit training at another airport. So, I would say something like 10 tons is usually going to work rather well, giving you zero fuel weight in the region of um, 42.3 plus the 10 tons, so you're looking anywhere around 52-53 tons in a 737-800. Alright, so let's discuss the pattern itself. On the first one, we are going to use the flight directors and the auto throttle in order to set our takeoff thrust and to do our first departure. The first departure is going to go straight ahead until we're level in 2700 feet, then we're going to switch off the flight directors and the auto throttle, and the student will take over hand flying the airplane. We'll fly into the downwind, and over there we're going to make a little bit of preparation for our first touch and go. So, in order to improve your instrument scanning, we usually do a full circle or an orbit at the downwind position. And that is to for the instructor to check how the student's instrument scan is, but also for the student to get accustomed to hand flying the airplane, not using the flight director. A small word about the instrument scan flow over here. For a level flight, we, are, we will be looking at approximately 5 degrees of pitch with round about 55% N1 setting. And a normal scan flow usually goes from the ADI to the speed, back to the ADI, to the altitude, back to the ADI, to the vertical speed, back to the ADI, and repeat. You should in the meantime also take the navigation display into account, even though we will primarily be looking outside on today's maneuver. However, it does give you quite a couple good hints for the traffic patterns, as well as the thrust setting, which for level flight should be approximately 55% at today's weight. Once we're in downwind and beam the runway threshold, we are going to start our timing and we're looking for 30 seconds plus minus half the total wind correction. So if you have, for example, a 8 knot headwind, you would use 4 seconds increased timing. And um, in today's exercise, however, I don't expect a lot of wind, so we can assume from a beam the threshold, 30 seconds. We're going to fly that to the 30 second point. Over there we're going to take the gear down, flap 15, we'll run the landing checklist, and at 45 seconds we'll select flaps 25, turn base, and start descending at 500 feet per minute. We're going to keep the airplane in the uh, turn and descending at 500 feet per minute until we reach our base, and 
At the base, we'll then have to um, figure out the correct timing to turn final. And that is where the navigation display and the extended centerline come in very handy. We'll probably be flying a speed of approximately 140 knots, which means 2 nautical miles per minute. And for our final turn, at a standard rate 1 turn, we're looking at 90 seconds. And um, this way we can figure out that we'll need roughly 1 nautical mile to do the final turn. So, at 1 mile we'll start the final turn. And the bank angle we'll need is going to be true airspeed divided by 10 plus 7, which equals a rate 1 turn. So we're looking at approximately a bit more than 20 degrees angle of bank. That gives us a nice little extra in case we are about to overshoot. And we will have our position tram vector available on the navigation display, which we can lay down directly on the runway center line, which is going to aid you in doing a correct turn. So, once we are approaching our profile, we will usually end up with three rats on the parpies, as we are going to see the parpies while we're still on the turn towards the final. And as soon as we're on profile, put out the landing flaps, run the landing checklist, or rather complete the landing checklist, which should then only cover the um, flaps, and go in for the touch and go. We'll aim to stay on the parpy until um, 50 feet from where on we'll shift our eyesight to the end of the runway and then conduct our flare and landing as usual. Now, as soon as the airplane is on the runway, the pilot monitoring is going to call my thrust. We'll set the thrust lever to somewhere between 60 and 70 percent and one and that has to be done rapidly to avoid the engines from spooling from the approach idle into ground idle. So increase the thrust to 60 to 70 percent and one. Maintain the aircraft on the center line using the rudder and upwind aileron as appropriate to correct for wind conditions. Set flaps 15 and trim the plane to five or six units. So you're looking between five and six units of trim. As soon as the trim is set, advance the thrust levers to 85 to 90 percent and one, and make your normal call. Take a thrust set indications normal. Be aware that if the flaps are still transiting from the landing setting to the 15 setting, you might get a takeoff configuration warning, which is entirely normal and which can be neglected in this case. Finally, you're going to rotate the airplane as you reach your previous VREF speed. So at VREF 30 or 40, call rotate, rotate it to 14 degrees, and then we'll go back into the profile. Now, from the touch and go into our traffic pattern, we will start our upwind turn a little bit earlier and we'll not go straight ahead as we did on the first one but at 400 feet we'll make our upwind turn and once the speed is above the white dot on the airspeed indicator we are going to retract the flaps to 5 they will stay in 5 all the way for our circuit so we do not retract the flaps any further than 5 From there on, we'll turn into the downwind, and on these turns, I would recommend you not to take more than 20 degrees angle of bank, because that is going to give you a little bit distance from the airport, so that you can have a proper base lag later on during the actual procedure. So, overall, let's have a quick review at the traffic pattern. When you're airborne, 400 feet above the field elevation, and the speed is above the uh, white dot, flaps 5, match speed, turn downwind. On downwind, run the after takeoff checklist, descent and approach checklist, which basically can be summarized, so the descent and approach checks can basically be summarized into deciding the landing flap setting for the next touch and go. A beam the threshold, timing, at 30 seconds, landing gear down, flap 15, landing checklist, 45 seconds, flat 25, turn base, descend at 500 feet a minute. Approaching the profile, landing flaps, complete the landing checklist. And finally, for some pitch and power values, we're sitting in the 737 800 here. So, flaps 5, level flight, 5 degrees of pitch, 55% and 1. And when you are turning final, Flaps 30, you're looking at approximately 1 degree and something around 55% again. Flaps 40, 0 degrees, 
and around 60% N1. And that is what we'll need for this circuit. So, sounds easy, doesn't it? No worries. It'll become a little bit clearer when we're actually flying the um, circuits and when I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, demonstration sort of how these things are actually going to look like. So, for the first takeoff, flight director on, auto throttle armed. So that's basically for any takeoff, not just the first, but for any takeoff from a standstill. And then, let's head into the airplane and see what's going to happen. Parking brake is released. Timing. Stabilized. So take off thrust. B1, rotate. Positive rate of climb. You're up. So for now, simply follow the flight director. Approaching the level of altitude, auto acquire. Just follow the flight director to get the right feeling about your aircraft. And 2,700 feet. So at this moment the instructor would normally uh, turn off the flight directors. So flight directors are off. Set your thrust. Auto thrust off, and we'll make our base turn. 55% N1 is uh, going to work pretty well normally. Our speed is still a little bit high from our takeoff, but that is fine. It is eventually going to come back when the pitch and power values are set correctly. During all the maneuvers, have a good look outside. We always want to know where we are going. And keep in mind, this is a visual maneuver, so the primary reference is actually by looking outside. Small upwind turn, there's our airport. And let's go base. Generally, for the base, if you have the three mile ring of the TCAS anywhere close to the runway, that is usually a good distance to be in order to fly your base. So, the three mile ring of the TCAS, if that's roundabout on the extended center line, that is usually working quite well. If you're inside or outside of that ring, just um, crack for it yourself and um, fly your base a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. So we're on the base now, so let's start with the 360 degree turn, so with our orbit, and um, use that to practice our instrument scan. What you are going to notice is that whenever you start a turn, your nose wants to drop. So I'm letting my control column go, the airplane is pretty much in trim here excluding a little bit of turbulence from Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's go ahead and make our turn. 25 degrees angle of bank. You will have to pull a little bit. The nose will go a little bit above the 5 degrees as well. Because now part of our thrust, uh, sorry, part of our lift is no longer acting um, to the top, but is pulling us to the side. That's why the aircraft is turning after all. Might need a little bit of increased thrust as well when you're doing the turn. So right now we're running at about 62% to gain a little bit of airspeed here. And keep in mind during the entire turn, 
you still have to look outside, look for traffic, etc. Because we are flying by a see and avoid rules at the moment. Don't let your speed drop too far. If it is going slightly below the bug, just add a little bit of extra thrust in order to get it back. And once you're back on the uh, flap 5 speed, go back to your pitch and power setting. For the turn, maybe a slight bit more, so something around 60% here. And keep in mind, if you are getting below the um, bug speed for your flap setting, you are flying on the negative side of the power curve. So the slower you go, the more thrust you'll need. Just keep that in mind. Right, so our airport is inside up there. For the after takeoff checklist, let's quickly complete that. So we have air condition and pressurization is at 2.2 bits, altimeters 1022, maintaining 2700. So let's do the first one using flaps 30. Descent and approach checklist are complete. So we've got a little bit closer to the airport right now, so I'm going to um, open up the downward leg a little bit. And as soon as we are a beam, the landing threshold, so a beam, a threshold over here, we're going to start our timing. Got five knots of headwind, generally going towards zero, so let's just um, go with 30 seconds here. Trimming the airplane out is really important within the maneuver, so from time to time just let go of the control column and uh, see if you're actually in trim. So we have been the threshold, timing, looking for 30 seconds. The speed brake will not be armed and the auto brake will be in off for the touch and go. That is really important here. Also, don't pull the reverser on landing. If any of these three apply to your landing, it will become a mandatory full stop. Go taxi back and do the same thing again. Okay, 30 seconds, gear down, flap 15, match speed, landing checklist. Start switches, continuous, recall, checked, speed brake, down the turn, landing gear down, three green, auto brakes, off. Okay, 45 seconds, flaps 25, we'll start our base turn, 500 feet a minute. Reduce thrust slightly. Er, approximately 2.5 degrees of pitch is going to give you a nice 500 feet a minute. So, if you have difficulty flying a correct vertical speed, just pitch the airplane to around 2.5 degrees-ish, and that's going to give you a nice 500 feet a minute. So, looking outside, there's our airport. So, this is where the um, extended center line now comes in really handy. We want to start our final turn approximately one mile from the center line. Still looking outside, of course, right now. Poppy is showing 4 red. That's expected because we are still flying perpendicular to the runway. We're at approximately 1 mile. Now you can uh, very nicely set your position trend vector here, right on the center line, and um, that is going to give you great aid with the positioning of the aircraft. Of course, you can also look outside and draw an artificial center line on your terrain, that's how I usually do it, and um, that really helps you to put the airplane right onto the center line as well. Alright, flaps 30, match speed, complete landing checklist. Flaps 30, 30, green light. Landing checklist complete. Alright, don't let everything get on top of you. Right now we are getting rather high, so we'll have to One correct thousand. for that. Note that since we're flying a pretty lightweight aeroplane, 
we are looking at uh, quite a little bit of pitch down moment here. So, wow. Poppy is slowly coming back. And here we are, back on the Poppy. Set your pitch power values. 55%, approximately 1 degree. That should give you a nice rate of descent. Rate of descent on final is ground speed divided by 10. Uh, times two. All right, so four, uh, three reps on the poppies, and right back into it. Fifty feet. Look at the runway end. Twenty. Ten. And here we are. So set your thrust. Shim five degrees. And set takeoff thrust. A5 90%, rotate. Gear up, positive freight. Four hundred feet, flaps five, match speed. And when you are approximately 300 feet from the target altitude, just reduce your thrust towards 60% and the nose is going to drop down really nicely. Like this. You might have to help it a little bit, but overall this works really fine. The um, pitch and thrust couple really comes to play very handy over here. Okay, so after takeoff checklist. Air condition and pressurization 1.0. Altimeters 1022, reading 2700. Alright, back onto the downwind. Going to make the turn a little bit more shallow here because our three mile ring is still um, just outside the runway. Okay, I would say this was quite an alright start, even though we got a little bit high on final. So let's do the same again, and let's do flap 30 landing again as well. So, flap 30 is reselected. Descent and approach checklist. Complete, flaps 30. Alright, so this is looking good. The ring is almost on the runway. Keep your airfield in sight as soon as we are on the uh, downwind, or as soon as we are beam the... Um, Landing threshold, start the timing. We can see we have just about, yeah, eight knots. So let's take an additional four seconds for the um, downwind and the uh, final turn. So we are a beam now. Timing. So we're looking for 34 seconds this time. And then 49 seconds for the final turn, or for the base turn. In the meantime, as you can see, if the uh, pitch and power values are set properly, like you can see, I don't have to do pretty much any changes to the thrust, and it, the speed is just staying where it's supposed to be. Okay, 34 seconds, gear down, flap 15, landing checklist. Start switches continuous, recall check, speed brakes, down detent, auto brakes off, landing gear down, free green. And we have 49 seconds this time. So, flaps 25, and a 500 feet per minute rate of descent. And this little bit of wind here is probably the reason why we've got high in first place on the uh, first landing, so let's do a little bit better this time. So, there is our landing runway. If you have for some reason um, not descended enough initially, like I stuck a little bit to one or two hundred feet a minute, then of course you can, in, for a short while, use a little bit more rate of descent than the 500 in order to catch up and average everything up again. All 
All right, there's our landing runway. Draw your artificial runway on the train in front of you for your extended center line. And we're about one mile out, so let's turn final. Flaps 30. Right, complete the landing checklist. Flaps, 30-30 green lights. Landing lights on, landing checklist complete. A very good hint as well as the three mile ring again. When the runway is one mile... Uh, sorry, when the runway is three miles from there, you want to be a thousand feet above the airport elevation. So the airport is at 700, so we're looking at 1,700 at that point. So that looks a little bit uh, on the high side here, but um, definitely better than last time. Adjust, adjust your position to be on the extended center line as early as possible. And then fly your airplane back into the parpies if you have not been on them initially. In real life this is a little bit easier than in the flight simulator because the parpies are visible a lot easier and because you can turn your head around easier than in the flight simulator. Right, for the flare, you're looking to raise your nose just about a degree or two. That's all you need to do. And you want to do that between 20 and 30 feet, depending on your rate of descent. So at 50, look to the runway end, and between 20 and 30, raise 50, the nose. 40, 30, 20, 10. Okay, flaps 15, 60%. Trim is set already. Maintain the center line, of course, and set takeoff thrust. 85%. Rotate. Europe. Positive rate. So we passed the 400s. Make our left turn. Flaps 5. Match speed. Three hundred to go, reduced to fifty-five percent and one, and the nose will come down very nicely. Okay, after take up checklist. Air condition pressurization one point zero altimeters one zero two two maintaining two thousand seven hundred. Okay, so let's do flap 40 landing on this one. Okay, descent and approach checklist. Landing flaps 40, descent and approach checklist complete. Okay, prepare your timer. So again, 8 knots headwind, so we're going to use uh, 4 seconds more, so 34 seconds and 49 seconds. Again, let go of your control column every now and then to see if your airplane is really trimmed out. And then, of course, when you're entering some turbulence of Microsoft Flight Simulator, you'll have to correct for it again manually. That's just how it is, unfortunately. Okay, we are beating the threshold. Timing.
you're down for 15. Landing checklist. Start switches, continues, recall checked, speed brake, down returned. Auto brakes off, landing gear, down three green. And we have 49 seconds. So, flaps 25, start the descent. So, you want to do a small base leg over here, like this. And then again, when you're approximately a mile from the runway line over here, you want to start your final turn. And here we go. So, we are currently on four red. And as soon as the puppies are coming in, we want to set the landing flaps. So... Keeping an eye on them is really not as easy in Flight Simulator as it is in real life. But I believe I see one white over there. So flaps 40, complete the landing checklist. Flaps 40, 40, green light. So keep the plane coming down, let's try not to lose our slope once again, we have one, one white on the puppy at the moment. By the way, as I just went a little bit under the uh, VREF, you can see how easily the rate of descent increased there. So, be careful with it. Like now, you can see how easily the airplane is... Um, losing energy when you're getting to the back side of the power curve. That was just a short demonstration there. 500. Okay. So, on the puppies. Okay, trim is set, set takeoff thrust, now we're getting the warning because the flaps are not in the takeoff range yet, rotate. You're up, positive rate. 400 feet, off we go. A little bit much thrust as well there. Let's go 85%. That's, that makes for a little bit um, better controllability since we are at a rather light weight. 300 to go, 55%. Watch the nose that as it comes down. And things can get busy quite easily. Just see how I forgot to retract the flaps to 5. But that's why we do the after takeoff checklist after all. So as soon as you've got the airplane and trimmed out stage. After takeoff checklist, air condition and pressurization 1.0, set, altimeters 1022, trying to maintain 2700.
All right. For the next one, we are going to do a go around to practice that as well. And on the go around, we are actually going to proceed straight ahead and clean the airplane up to the um, to a flap zero configuration to follow the normal go around profile. So, what um, you have to know here is that um, the flight directors are off. However, nonetheless, when you press the toga button, the flight director is going to plop up on the primary flight display. So it is available for you to use. However, as soon as it would go into altitude acquire, the flight director is going to be removed again from the primary flight display. Right, so we are passing the beam position, timing, looking for 34 seconds roughly, let's set the power back to 55%-ish, so that our speed is going to come back as well, again 34 seconds, and this time at 500 feet we are going to do our go around. If you're looking for a good hint for the 500 feet, you always have the uh, tape on the uh, on the um, autometer. The white bar is 1000 and the amber bar is 500. Okay, gear down, flap 15. Landing checklist. Start switches continuous, recall check, speed brakes down, detent. Landing gear down, 3 green, auto brakes off. And 49 seconds, over we go. Flaps 25, 500 feet a minute, that's our airport. Rate of descent is a little bit high, correcting for that. And let's start our final turn. Harpies are showing four reds at the moment, but that should change momentarily. A bit more bank to make the center line. And here we are on the poppies, flaps 40. Okay, complete the landing checklist. Flaps, 40-40, green light, landing lights on, landing checks complete. Flaps 15, set go around thrust. Okay, positive freight, gear up. I'll quickly. Okay, that flat rack is not quite doing what it's supposed to do, but doesn't matter. Flaps 5, flaps 1. And flaps up. We can quickly buck up manually. Level off, reduce your thrusts. And that's pretty much it. We can turn back to our base after takeoff checklist. Air condition pressurization 1.0 set. Altimeters 1022, 2800. After takeoff checklist complete.
Alright, so, um, I just stumbled upon an issue over here. When I pressed the toga button, the flight directors should have shown up, but they didn't. That kind of made the thing a little bit messy, and that is definitely going into the bug tracker of uh, PMDG, because that should not have happened. The flight directors should have shown up and should have given us guidance. Anyway, what is important here is that you keep track of your airspeed. So you can see how quickly the airspeed increased there, and um, you have to keep on with the flap retraction. So you can see at flap 15 uh, how close we were to the flap over speed, so retracting the flaps early enough is paramount here. So let's come in for our final landing then. This one we're going to use flaps 30 once again. And let's start configuring the airplane. So, flaps 1. What you can do during the circuit training is um, to change between different weather scenarios to give yourself some turbulence or to change the crosswind conditions to make things a little bit more interesting. So you can always vary the environmental conditions a little bit here to make things a little bit more interesting for you. Okay, flaps 5. And we're approaching the beam position. Timing. Again, a little bit of headwind. Let's use 34 seconds once again. Keep in mind, it's 30 seconds by default, and you are going to add um, half the headwind component. So if you have eight knots of headwind, you want to add four seconds. Similarly, if you had um, 8 knots of tailwind, you want to subtract that time. Oh, and of course my timer didn't uh, start. That would have been great. Anyway, then we uh, need to guesstimate a little bit on this one. Normally our base position was somewhere over here, so I tend to say let's go gear down, flex 15. Another 15 seconds till our final turn. Okay, we'll turn final, flaps 25. And the landing checklist, start switch is continuous, recall check, speed brake, arm green light this time, landing gear, down 3 green, auto brakes off. And 500 feet a minute rate of descent. So if you have kind of lost your timing a little bit, um, First of all, you can of course help yourself by looking outside. You have probably memorized um, approximately where your position in the traffic pattern is going to be. However, keep in mind one thing. You're flying around to 140 knots, that is 2 nautical miles per minute. So 45 seconds for the base turn is going to be roughly at um, a little bit less than 2 nautical miles from the runway. The 3 mile ring and the 2.5 mile um, indication on your ND here are definitely going to help determining the uh, final position. Also, if you're not 100% sure if your altitude is correct, just have a look outside and just guesstimate it. Or, look here, you have approximately 4 miles to fly right now, so the airport, airport's at 1,700, you lose around 300 feet per... You lose around 300 feet per um, nautical mile on a normal descent, so you're looking at about 1,200-ish above the airport elevation, so that gives you a possibility to determine how high or low you should be as well. We can see now we hit the 3 mile ring, should be a thousand feet above the airport, and we roughly are, so I tend to say we are going to come out rather well on the puppies once we complete our final turn. And indeed, if you look out there, we have two whites, two wet reds, so that's exactly where we want it to be. Flaps 30, complete the landing checklist. Flaps 30, 30, green light, landing checks complete. And here we are. Five hundred. When you're on the puppies, around 700 feet a minute is going to give you a decent rate of descent here. 
to maintain your three degrees glide. Of course, you can also use the fly path vector, but this one is really focused on looking outside. So when the runway is steady in your windshield, that is basically where you want to be. Okay, so speed brake up, thruster is normal, we have no auto brake on this one, we could have used the auto brakes by the way, not mandatory but we could, 100 knots, 80 knots, 60 knots, manual braking, back towards idle reverse, now we can let the airplane roll to the next exit. For the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to stop the airplane on the runway. So, I hope you found this one interesting. Let me know about it in the comments below. Tell me how, you, how your circuits are working out. And most importantly, tell me if you want me to go into any more details on any part of this maneuver. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this one. If you did, I am looking forward to hearing from you. And as always, if you want to support the channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me A Coffee link that you can find in the video description below. For now, thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.